So right now we're going to begin installing the controller portion of the SEX. This is the portion that lives in or around your digital irrigation timer. To be briefly, this essentially works as a switch. We're wiring it so that the signal that travels from the clock to the valves in the field has to go through this device. When the soil moisture is over the threshold that, that is set on this device, the signal stops here and uh, does not go to the valves in the field. We're going to begin with the power. The two power wires for this device are the orange and the black. The first step is to remove all your wires from your common ports. This would include pump start relay wires so that your pump doesn't come on if the signal is blocked. The second uh, wire is the orange wire. This is a wire that goes to a 24 volt power source. Most digital timers have two ports that carry 24 in from a transformer. This orange wire will only wire to one of them. The orange wire and the black wire are now connected. The power, bolt, the, the power port that works for this clock is the top one, so that's where we put our orange wire. All wires are removed from the common port, and the only wire in there is the black wire coming from the controller. The loose common wire that goes to the field, I'm now going to wire to the white wire from the controller. Now we're going to talk about how the controller here communicates to the TDT sensor that's buried in the field. In this instance, we wired the TDT sensor into the valve that is zone number three on the clock. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to remove the zone wire off of port three, and we're going to put the green controller wire in port three. The final step is going to be wiring the red wire from the controller to the zone wire from the valve that has the TT sensor connected to it in the field. All the collections are now wired. I'm going to test to see if I get a signal from the field. So this has been a successful installation of an SEX soil moisture sensor. Grease cups are good. You can kind of see the grease coming out the side. Um, it prevents water from getting in the connection. So as long as the connection is fully covered by that grease, the water can't get in there. Um, if you get water in there, you get corroded wires, and you can get um, you can lose your connection between the timer and the valves. And in this case, the timer, the valve, and the sensor. So as Mike mentioned earlier. Um, the way this system works is once the water reaches a certain, or the water content in the soil where the sensor is buried reaches a certain threshold, which is set in this controller, the controller prevents the timer from sending a signal from the timer to the valve, hence um, preventing irrigation from turning on. Now, setting that threshold is very important because it differs from soil to soil, home to home, yard to yard. So. Um, with this specific controller, there is a way to do it automatically um, using their calibration method and basically you pour a bucket of water over the sensor area, thoroughly saturating the soil and you want to do that in the late afternoon, early evening, then you set the irrigation to run the next morning. 
um, push some buttons on the controller, you're going to hold down the read sensor and then these two buttons at the same time. And then the next morning, when it, the timer goes to turn on the irrigation, it's going to set the number for you for the threshold. Now with other systems that work similar to this, they'll have their own calibration methods, so you should consult with their manufacturer recommendations.